principles of molecular monitoring in chronic myeloid leukemia. And uh, Pankaj is uh, professor in charge of clinical hematology at the PGI Chandigarh. Uh, he is, uh, according to his own submission, also a COVID uh, treatment expert now. So if you have any COVID-related questions, Pankaj is the person to talk to. Pankaj, you have 10 minutes and, uh, yeah. and the screen is yours. Yeah, so I would, uh, from my screen, I would, uh, you know, uh, make the presentation. So the topic which is given to me is essentials of molecule monitoring in chronic myeloid leukemia. Now, why do you need to monitor CML? Uh, the reason is that you want to do a response assessment. Why do you want to do a response assessment? Because uh, of various reasons. And these are to predict long-term survival, predict cure, and thus stopping therapy, decreasing the dose of medication, need for change of treatment, and for females' pregnancy decisions. And how do you monitor uh, CML? You can monitor clinically. You can monitor hematologically, cytogenetically, or molecular. And then we will discuss what is the frequency of monitoring. Now, just take an example that you have a car, Maruti car, and you actually want to visit from uh, Puri to uh, Vijaywada in Andhra Pradesh, and it takes 12 hours by a routine uh, Maruti uh, car. And if you divide from uh, you know Puri to Brahampur, it will take three hours. From uh, Brahampur to uh, Vijayagaram, it will take another three hours. And then another six hours to reach Guntur or Vijayawada. Now, let's say you start uh, uh, from Puri, but it takes you know to five hours to reach Brahampur, which basically means that you need another seven hours to complete this distance. That means either you need to change your car. That means if you are on imatinib, then you need to change to the second line TKI. Or you double the speed of your, your Maruti 800. That means you double the dose of imatinib, which I feel is still an option for uh, uh, you know very poor uh, Indian patients who cannot afford the second line TKI. So this is what is monitoring. So uh, the let's go to the uh, uh, monitoring and we will discuss about what is the clinical monitoring. The clinical monitoring is done by resolution of splenomegaly and resolution of extramedular disease, if that is any. The hematological uh, uh, remission is when there is a normalization of WBC count and there are no abnormal or immature cells in the peripheral blood film and the platelet counts are less than 4.5 lakhs. Then cytogenetics is uh, done by conventional and FISH by looking at the chromosomes uh, uh, and we have major cytogenetic remission and complete cytogenetic response when there are 0% Philadelphia positive metaphases. However, the problems are this is done on bone marrow samples which is painful. And it is a tedious job to look at the, uh, uh, you know, metaphases and only 20, 20 metaphases are checked and sensitivity and specificity increases if you look for Philadelphia in more than 20 metaphases. And you can also do from the peripheral bud where you have to look at the 200 cells and, uh, uh, but it is little costlier than the conventional cytogenetics and there can be false positive 5 to 10%. Now, the most commonly used is molecular monitoring by PCR and is the gold standard. It can be done on from the peripheral blood and it is a very sensitive technique. Uh, there was problem in the standardization, but uh, now um, uh, fortunately, we most of the uh, labs are now are well standardized uh, and they are giving on international scale. Now, once you have a clinical remission, you have to look at the hematological remission, look at the cytogenetic remission, and then look at the molecular remission. However, from once the patient has achieved hematological remission, you can directly go to molecular remission also because these days, uh, you know, we don't have many uh, labs which who are doing cytogenetics. Now, the next is frequency of uh, uh, monitoring. So, Clinical is uh, and hematological. Generally, you do a clinical examination and CBC two weekly until the patient achieve a complete hematological response. Then you do monthly for three months. And after that, you do three monthly. Whereas cytogenetics and molecular actually are done generally three to six monthly. And as I said before, uh, you don't do the cytogenetics these days uh, unless there are clear indications. You uh, directly go to the molecular monitoring. Uh, and these are the gold standard. Now we come to the response uh, assessment uh, that uh, once you are monitoring the patient, what are you 
like what are you actually doing the assessment the first is predicting long term survival so this paper uh, which is quite an old paper looked at uh, five year follow up patient receiving imatinib for cml by brand duker and here patients who have achieved complete cytogenic response within 12 months they did not progress to accelerated phase or blast crisis by 60 months that means at 12 months you could predict that this patient will do well over a period of next 5 years and uh, these are the graphs the patients uh, who did not achieve a hematological uh, response uh, they did not do well whereas the patients who achieved a, a cytogenic response they did well and then this paper came by uh, david merin who actually looked at the bcr abl transcripts at 3 months and they could predict what is happening at 8 years so somebody who so they looked at 282 patients and the patients who achieved a bcr abl less than at 10% at 3 months they did well over a period of 8 years the next is predicting cure and the stopping therapy we know uh, about various uh, 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 stop imatinib and stop uh, second generation uh, tki studies and this is uh, uh, the study uh, uh, stim one study long term follow up of uh, french stop imatinib where they looked at 100 patients and uh, we all know that almost 40% of patients were able to achieve a sustained uh, molecular response then is a decreasing the dose of medication so if you know that the patient is in molecular response or sustained molecular response you can actually decrease the dose uh, from 400 to 300 and sometimes even 200 uh, by uh, that means that the patient will actually have decrease in the side effects and you have good quality of life of these patients then if there is a need to for change of treatment so somebody who is actually not achieving the de desired response you can consider changing to nilotinib or desertinib and these are the tidal two studies uh, uh, as well as uh, some other studies and then for females the pregnancy decisions so uh, this is uh, one of the paper looking at managing pregnancy in cml so if the preconception planning so if the patient has durable mmr at least for 24 months you stop the tki at the start of menstrual cycle conception and pregnancy and then you monitor this patient uh, by qpcr every uh to 6 to 8 weekly whereas uh, with assisted reproductive technology you see the patient achieve chr or mmr then stop tki and then commence in vitro fertilization and oocyte collection and restart tki so this is you know you can uh, uh, help in patients becoming uh, uh, you know starting the family life now the next question is what what is optimal assessment and uh, dr tulika has already i think discuss about the eln 2020 uh, i'll just discuss little bit about the 2013 before, uh, before going to 2020 so the optimal response was uh, the one which is associated with long term outcome failure means the patient should receive a, a, a different treatment to uh, limit the progression and warning is that the patient is responding but you require more treatment monitoring so you know it's like you are driving a car and we keep on evaluating at different uh, time points you have a red uh, yellow and uh, green red basically means failure that means treatment is going to fail in near future uh, yellow is a warning that means you have to be careful you require more frequent monitoring and may require change in treatment and green is that the patient is in optimal response and there is no change in treatment which is required so at 3 months the optimal is less than 10% at 6 months the bcr abl of less than 1% and at 12 months it should be less than 0.1% which means it is optimal and then you have uh, uh, based on the levels you have warning at failure and any time after 1 year if uh, the bcr abl is more than 0.1% or there is additional changes in chromosomes uh, that means it is warning or failure the methods to do the, this is from cml 2020 so these are the housekeeping genes uh, abl1 or uh, uh, gus you can take that and uh, this is the optimal warning and failure uh, by cml 2020 and for patients aiming at tfr the optimal response at any time is bcr abl of less than 0.01 that means a deep molecular response or molecular response of 4 or 4. Point, sometimes 4.5 a change of treatment may be considered if mmr is not achieved by 3 to 4 years of time and the loss of mmr indicates failure after tr finally not everything uh, that can be counted counts and not everything that counts can be counted from uh, albert uh, uh, einstein 
uh, on the monitoring of CML. Uh, uh, so finally concluding, the chronic myeloid leukemia is a now a curable cancer. Multiple treatment options are available. Monitoring as an essential component of the treatment in the journey towards curability. And molecular monitoring of BCR, ABL gene at international scale is currently the gold standard technique. With that, I thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Pankaj.